Hey, it's Jared with Gear and Light. Today we're gonna to talk about the top five mistakes that I see new camera buyers making. This would probably be people who are new to photography and are thinking about purchasing a camera. There's tons of information out there on what cameras are great, and that's constantly changing because new models are always coming out. Uh, but the first thing that I always uh, see happen is that some people buy more camera than they really need. When you're starting out, you don't necessarily need the biggest and baddest camera that's out there. You don't need to spend a whole lot of money to start to get good photos. You really just need to buy a camera that meets your basic needs and build from there. So it's easy to go out and say, okay, well, if I'm gonna spend a, a couple hundred or a couple thousand or something like that on a camera, whatever your budget is, to just utilize all of that money and buy the nicest camera that you can for that amount of money. And that can sometimes be a mistake. I'm gonna talk about a few more things through this uh, video that I think will help you better understand why buying too much camera early on is a mistake. But another thing to consider is that you are a beginner. Uh, if you're a beginner in photography, then you want to buy a camera that's going to be usable as you're learning. It's very easy to get a camera that's too complex. There are some camera models out there and from certain manufacturers that are more complex and are harder to navigate and utilize. So when you pick up a camera and you start using it, you might end up getting frustrated because there's just too many things to think about and too many things to know. Now, one of the things that I like to do is help educate. And so for cameras like the Sony a7 IV, I made a course teaching people how to utilize this camera because for some people this might be their first camera, albeit a very nice camera for their first uh, camera that's something other than their smartphone, but there's lots to think about and lots to learn when using this camera. And whether or not you are looking at this from wanting just to be uh, a hobby, uh, maybe you take better pictures of the kids, stuff like that, or you're looking at maybe wanting to do photography once you get to a certain point as a profession, there's, there's a lot to learn. Don't just go out and buy the biggest, baddest camera that your money can afford because that may be a mistake. Number two is not spending on a good lens. Now, if you go and you dump all of your money on a really nice camera and you don't buy a good lens, then you're choking that camera's capability of capturing really nice images. Think of it this way. I wear glasses. If I went out and just got some old used glasses from some yard sale or whatever that were all scratched up, somebody else's prescription, and I thought, oh, these are good enough, and I put them on, am I gonna be able to see as well as if I went and got lenses for my glasses or glasses specifically that were tuned to my vision and were new without scratches or blemishes? Obviously, the new glasses uh, that were better, that were more tuned for uh, my eyesight would be better. And the same goes with a camera. You don't want to put glass that is old or, I mean, if you're going for a specific look, that might be fine. But if you're looking to get the best images out of your camera, you might want to focus on spending more money on a lens than you do on your actual camera. And that really sounds weird because... Obviously the camera is the one capturing the photos, but the lens is the glass in which all the light and everything that you're about to capture goes through. And if it's not a good lens, you're gonna have issues with focusing, you're gonna have issues with clarity and all of that stuff, and your camera is gonna be choked because it doesn't have a good lens. And so I always recommend somebody buying a good lens and then spending what they can on a camera. So not spending on a good lens is a mistake and it leads to a lot of frustration that people have. When I first got started, I bought a Canon 20D because that's what my budget allowed for and um, I got frustrated with the lens really quick. So before buying another camera, the first thing that I did was buy a lens because I realized my lens is the thing that was kind of choking me down. So number three is assuming that new is best. These cameras have gotten so good over the last decade. There are cameras, whether you're looking at Sony or Canon or Nikon or 
you know, any of these camera manufacturers, they have models that are three, four, five years old now that are amazing, that take amazing photos that you can get at a much cheaper price so that you could spend more money on a lens. And so newest isn't always the best based on what you're trying to achieve. And some people think, well, like I'm not gonna buy a camera because I don't have the money yet and I wanna buy this $3,000 camera jumping in at that price point all you're doing is is prolonging your dream of getting started with photography or getting a good camera spend what you can on a camera focus more on the lens don't worry about it being the latest and the greatest and that being the barrier to entry for you to get started a lot of people say that oh, i'm still saving up for this or i'm gonna soon get this or i plan to get this next year it's like well okay that's a great that's a great dream to get that camera, but what if you could get a camera that's a little bit less right now and get started and that camera is still very capable. So think about that. Number four is not trusting their smartphone to do a good enough job. Maybe you don't necessarily need to go out and buy some fancy camera to get good photos. Think about your smartphone. I've got a couple of them here. I've got the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I've got the Galaxy S22 Ultra. I've got the new Pixel 6a uh, from Google and all of these shoot amazing photos and if you learn a little bit about how to utilize these types of cameras, which is a bit different than learning how to use one of these, you can get amazing photos out of these. I absolutely love the S22 Ultra because it's got multiple camera lenses on the back and it lets me zoom in super close to things that are far away and I I really love the images that I get out of that phone. Um, it's not necessarily the phone that I carry with me all the time and the reason that I have so many phones is because I have another YouTube channel called State of Tech where I talk about mobile technology but the S22 Ultra is just, it's, it's amazing when it comes to photography. Google obviously with their phones, their Pixel phones, has really been doing cool things with camera, uh, not even camera sensors, but camera software technology. And, and you're able to get amazing images out of a phone that is a bit smaller. And of course they've got the 6 Pro and all that stuff too. Great phones that take great images. And then the iPhone is kind of tried and true. It takes great images as well. And just, it, you can't go wrong with the, uh, the iPhone Pro model of phones too. So not trusting your smartphone can be a mistake also. Thinking that the only way that you're gonna get good images is if you go out and spend a lot of money on a camera. Totally not true. Uh, make sure to check out some of my other videos. I've got some smartphone photography and video, uh, videography videos as well and then check out State of Tech for more on mobile technology. The last one, number five, which I think a lot of people fall prey to, is trusting one YouTuber's opinion uh, on a review or something like that. Now, I review products and stuff like that, sometimes cameras, accessories, and all of that. I don't want anybody just to trust my own word and, and me as the only opinion that they took in. You should take in multiple opinions and you should listen to somebody who's giving you advice that is not just about buying the next greatest thing. Most of what I talked about here is not jumping in over your head and buying too much of something that you don't need. And it's very easy to do that because us YouTube reviewers, we get excited about new technology and we, you know, we make great videos and we talk about features and all this stuff and it can be uh, a bit much and some people jump on board and buy the latest and greatest when it's not what they really need. So before you go out and make any purchases, don't take one person's opinion on the idea of a specific camera and, and bake that into your mind as that's what you need in order to succeed and, and meet whatever goals you have coming up. It, it might be. A lot of these cameras are fantastic and if you have the money and you have the time to learn how to use them, go for it. But if money and time is a concern, then there's a lot that you can do with your money and your time that you have available so that you get the most out of, uh, of what's possible. So uh, I have one bonus tip, and that's uh, a mistake that some people make, especially when buying something a little bit more expensive, and that's not trying it out first. Now, I live in an area where there's no camera store. 
I used to live in an area where there was a camera store. It went out of business. Camera stores are harder to find. And so it is much harder to go in and try something. Of course, you've got like Best Buy and Target and certain stores like that that have a few cameras and you can go in and try them but you can't take them for a walk and go out and utilize them for a few days to see if it's something that you're gonna like. So renting a camera might be an option. And some will say, well, yeah, if I'm gonna rent a camera for you know, 80 bucks or 100 bucks, that's money that could have gone towards the camera purchase itself. Yes, but it's also kind of like an insurance policy against making the wrong choice. If you rent a camera from like Lens Pro to Go or something like that, I'll put a couple links down in the description below for uh, rental companies that I've used, then you could test drive a camera and a lens and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, then that's great. You just learn something like maybe it's too complex. It's more than you want to bite off. That's great. Now you know that and you only spent a little bit of money to rent one instead of spending money on buying one and then being outside the return window and being stuck with a camera that you're not going to use. There are so many cameras that go unutilized that are sitting in bags because they ended up being too complex for the person uh, and their needs. So don't fall prey to that either. Anyways, I hope that this helped you in some respect uh, with deciding what to do and purchasing a camera or purchasing your next camera. Of course, there's the comment section below this video. Feel free to ask any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. I've also noticed that there's a lot of, of you that watch my videos that come into the comments and provide fantastic feedback that I couldn't have wrote any better myself, and I appreciate that. And so we're kind of all helping each other out. None of us want to see the other person make a bad purchase, bite off more than they can chew, or spend money on the wrong thing. So let's go down to that comment section and help each other out. I hope to see you back on another video soon so make sure to subscribe to the channel here on gear and light i uh, hope they are having a great day and we'll see you back in the next one take care